In this video we are going to be looking over this Minolta SRT 101 35mm film SLR camera equipped with the uh, MC Rocker PF f1.7 50mm prime lens. And I thought we would put this through all of the testing that you would probably want to do if you had this in your hand and you were trying to evaluate the condition of it. So I thought I would step down through the shutter speeds and as I advance the shutter it's important to point out the little black tip from the film advance lever is missing as it often is on this model. Um, probably the best way to remedy that is to find a junk camera and replace this whole assembly. But it can be used as is, it's just not quite as comfortable as with uh, the correct tip on there. But here's at one one thousandth of a second, one five hundredth, one two fiftieth, one one hundred twenty fifth, one sixtieth, one thirtieth, one fifteenth, one eighth, one fourth. And we can notice here as these slower speeds the uh, aperture blades are closing down quickly as they should in the lens. Let's just stop that down all the way to f16 just to really show that. Here's that one half second and one full second and the bulb setting where the blades stay stopped down and the shutter stays open as long as I hold the button down. So the shutter speeds all sound good and let's just take off the lens here for a moment and look at that. It has nice clicks on the aperture ring. Nice smooth focus as most of these Minolta lenses are really nice and smooth like that. And if I were to stop this all the way down to f16, we look in. I do not see any oil on the blades and they are very quick when I activate the the little lever in the back and if we look from the back I also don't see any oil from this side either. Let's open it wide up and then shine a flashlight in from the back. There's a bright LED flashlight. I do see some internal dust and I, I would say there's some light haze in there too. I mean it's not real bad but uh, I, I see some things lighting up there and I'm trying to get the flashlight to kind of scan across there so that you can see what I'm seeing in the video here. So uh, I would say there's a little bit of light haze in there. Um, if we look at the body now here, um, one of the things we want to check is the mirror lockup and that's working. A little lever there. Kind of a nice feature for a tripod shooting. Um, the aperture follower ring is sprung nicely and free. That's very important. Let's try the self timer. Actually, to try the self timer, you have to push this little button right there. Yeah. Okay. So the self timer is working. Let's mount the lens back on and check the stop down uh, button on here. Now this one has a locking one where it locks at the aperture that's set and then you can adjust that if you wanted to do for stop down metering for example. And then you push it again to take it off. And the film advance has to be advanced for that to work and that's normal. So that's good. Let's look at the, uh, the top. As noted, that little tip is missing. It's it's certainly possible to use it without it. It's just not quite as comfortable on the thumb, but not a real big deal. On the back, uh, looks pretty good. The bottom looks pretty good. There's not a lot of uh, scuffing around the tripod socket. A little bit, but not too much, and generally not that bad. I did put a battery in here just to test the meter, just to see if it's responsive to light. Now with these SRTs, you have to remember that they use this battery that is, uh, while you can get one that fits these days, 
it is not the same voltage that this was designed for and uh, there are ways of dealing with that and that a whole separate discussion should be had about that so the accuracy of the meter depends on getting the right voltage in there or recalibrating the camera meter to work with the higher voltage and there's a variety of things that people do or just use a separate meter but I did verify that with that battery that's not included the battery check setting works and the metering does respond to light and I'm pretty familiar with how the metering on these cameras work because I started using an SRT 201 in 1979 and it is very similar to this just missing them the mirror lock up and it added a hot shoe but not much other than that so I'm quite familiar with this camera in general here's pulling up on the uh, film rewind crank and that seemed a little stiff pulling that up I mean it does work but I pulled it up and it pulled pretty hard um, inside here now we can watch the film transport and the shutters as I actuate it here. And we can see all that looks like that's good. It feels really good and solid. Um, we look over here on the door. Pressure plate looks pretty good. The, uh, there certainly is some light seal material accumulating along the bottom door edge. Not so much across the top, but a little bit. And other than that, cosmetically it is uh, not too bad. I see a little ding right there. Tried to capture that in one of the photos. And uh, otherwise, pretty good. A few little signs of use, but I wouldn't say abuse. And it has this cap that is tethered to the strap here. And that is a generic 55 millimeter cap that fits the lens like that. I don't know how handy that is, but let's see. We pull it way up here and put that on like that. That's pretty good. And it has the original Minolta strap, it's got the Minolta name, it's the older style Minolta printing which matches the logo on the camera itself. And it's still soft and pliable, 